One thing I want to mention before we move on is why the number of batteries that a flashlight takes matters. Now these old flashlights that took two cells, they would either take two AA's, two C cells, two D cells, they always seem to take two because that was the standard voltage of a flashlight filament. You could make these to take any voltage from one volts to uh, as high as you want to go. Obviously they make light bulbs that take 240 volts. So you can really size these to be whatever you want. However, LEDs are not that way. So all of our LED flashlights, <clears throat> they have a fixed amount of volts that they need to run. A blue LED requires more than 3 volts to turn on. And that's very important because that means that a flashlight like this needs at least 3 cells to run because two 1.5 volt cells only gives you about 2 volts once those batteries are fully discharged. So what they do to make sure that you have enough voltage is they run them on three cells. That's why you get these little inserts with three AAA batteries. And that's pretty standard construction for one of these mini flashlights anymore. That's one way that you can get around it. However, LEDs have a very odd discharge characteristic in which they, um, as the battery voltage drops, the intensity of the LED drops very, very significantly. So initially it'll draw a lot of current out of your battery. After your batteries drain a little bit, the LED will dim quite quite a bit and it'll draw less current out of your batteries. That's always, that's not necessarily a good thing. So for example, these flashlights here, all three of these run off of three AAA batteries. And that's why they do that, because they just directly connect the batteries to the LEDs and just let her buck. But that's not the best way to do it. There's a better way to do it. This one, for example, runs off of two AAA batteries. Now, one obvious benefit is that every time the batteries are dead, you only need to replace two batteries, not three. But there's a reason why they can do that. There's two batteries in here, very typical. But inside here, there's actually a printed circuit board that has a buck converter circuit on it. I'm sorry, a boost converter circuit on it. And that boosts the voltage up to the proper voltage for the LED. And that means that as the batteries in here drain, this LED is still the same intensity until the batteries are very nearly dead. And then the, the uh, light output drops significantly from there. And you go into uh, a very dim mode where the batteries are pretty well just simply pass directly through the LED. But uh, that's a very nice feature. It gives you a constant light output and you don't have to replace the batteries right away. It's easier on the batteries, it's more efficient, just basically better all around. But it costs more to make because they have to put that integrated circuit in here. And you can find videos where they disassemble mag lights. There's lots of them out there. I'm not going to do that myself, but this is the similar sort of thing. It takes 2D batteries and they run a boost converter up here in the flashlight head to make that work. So that's one nice thing about these two in particular. But how necessary is it really? So the next test that I'm going to do is an intensity test. I'm going to show you how I do that here. For the light output test, I'm going to be using a very simple instrument. This happens to be a multimeter with a lux meter option built in. This up here measures the amount of light which is weighted for the human visual system. So it will tell us uh, empirically how bright each of these flashlights are. Now if I wanted to measure the total light output from a flashlight, I'd have to put this inside of some sort of spherical measuring system or devise my own, which could be done, but it would be very time consuming and not very interesting, or cost a lot of money, and I don't have a lot of money, so I'm just going to use this device. Now, when I turn on a flashlight and shine it at a surface, it looks something like this. You get a circle of light. Depending on how close you get it, it gets brighter and smaller. Further away, it gets dimmer and bigger. So what I'm going to do is basically size the flashlight so that this circle is a certain diameter. And then I'm going to put my light meter somewhere near the outer edge of that diameter and just measure the light on the outer edge of that diameter. That way I should get a fairly fair comparison between these different flashlights. Because, for example, take this mag light. I can make the light very large, or I can concentrate it down to as small area as I want. Now if I measure the intensity with a small dot, I'm going to conclude that this is very bright, and then it's great. But that's not fair. 
So I'm going to adjust it until it's about the same size as the others, and then take the light reading in a similar way. That way I should get a fair comparison between the different flashlights. Now, if you want a very focused beam, that's great, but sometimes you don't. And this really isn't a discussion on which is better, a focused beam or not. That depends on your application. So I'm just going to take the beam, focus it to about the same size as the other flashlights. And that may mean bringing the flashlight closer, leaving it further away and measure the light at about over here in the light output spectrum. That way I'll get an idea of what kind of illumination area we'll get from each flashlight. And this is my test setup. I have a couple of chairs over here, an inverter box, because that's the first box I found laying around, and a picture on the wall. So I'm going to take my meter, set it up here on this box, <clears throat> and uh, put that right in the middle of the picture, shine a light in the picture so that the picture is fully illuminated and I have a, a device behind the camera so that I can get the light area about the same in each case and I will measure the lux for each of these different flashlights. And I'm also going to show you what this picture looks like illuminated for with each flashlight just to give you an idea of the color rendering abil abilities of each of these. Now this looks a lot better in person. This isn't the best camera and there's also camera artifacts that are going to show up, but you should be able to see some very rudimentary differences at least between the different flashlights. Some of them I suspect will illuminate the different colors in this image quite well, and some of them won't. This is the Maglite Mini, and I'm going to compare each of them with the standard incandescent flashlight. So this is the incandescent flashlight that'll shine around, obviously has a very focused center, but otherwise doesn't give out all that much light, but you can at least compare color temperature. And I have the beam sized about here, I'll try to size the beam about the same on the rest. And my lux meter is reading about 17 lux. So that is that flashlight. Let's try the standard 2 D-cell flashlight the one that I just compared this one to. I'll put that one on here, and it looks like I'll have to move it back a little bit so that it matches the beam size. And if I put it about here, it's similar in beam size. And again, I don't want to measure the intensity at that central point. <clears throat> That's really not the purpose of this. I want to see what it is for general illumination. So if I'm looking around a room, looking for something, I want to be able to see what's around me. That's what I use flashlights for. So that's what I'm going to be measuring here. And this one, the old style standard 2D cell tungsten filament, is 9 lux. So we had 17 with the mini maglite and 9 with the standard 2D cell. So what happens if we move up to the LED maglite? tried to adjust the beam pattern to a similar size. This is the 2D cell LED mag light. I purchased this just uh, a few months ago. So this is a modern flashlight this time. And you can see that it is nice and bright and the images are very well rendered. And if I compare that to a standard incandescent light, this is what it looks like. Obviously the color temperature is much different. This light is yellow, the other light is blue and it is thoroughly overpowered by the new maglite. Let's see what the intensity is. And we are at 79 lux. So that means that this modern flashlight is about 10 times as bright as the old flashlights of yesterday. We'll see what that means for battery life a little bit later. But for now, let's move on. And uh, next I'll do a very old LED flashlight. I'm having a bit of a struggle centering this one, but I think that's about as good as I'll get. 
So this is that old LED Guidesman flashlight. And you can see that it is quite blue compared to the old standard flashlight, but not all that bright. However, it does illuminate the room quite well. It has a more spread beam pattern than some of the others. So it's not terrible. Let's see what the intensity is. And we're at 24. That's not too bad. So now let's move on to one of the China flashlights. Move on to the silver China flashlight. And I'll see if I can get this one centered. And this is the 3 AAA silver no-name Chinese flashlight. I couldn't even give you a brand because I have no idea. I don't think it was even advertised on the shelf. But it is pretty bright, and uh, let's see what the intensity is. This one is 25. And if we compare it to the incandescent flashlight, you can see that, once again, it is much more blue. But much brighter and thoroughly a just better flashlight overall. We'll talk about battery life later once again. So let's move on from this one to the other Chinese flashlight that I have. And this is the other one. You can see that this one is really quite bright. And I may have a bit of a challenge here centering this beam. And that's pretty good, so we'll just go with that. So this flashlight is quite bright. I rather like this one. The image looks nice and vibrant. It's probably oversaturated on the camera, but in person, it looks pretty good. And comparing once again to the incandescent light, the incandescent light is thoroughly overpowered, and uh, the image really looks quite nice. Let's see what kind of intensity we're getting. 25. We get 25 lux on that one. And we have one flashlight left, the other name brand flashlight, Energizer. And this is the Energizer flashlight. It uses two AAA batteries. If we compare that to the incandescent light, the incandescent light is looks pretty similar to intensi in intensity to me. However, there's likely other advantages to the uh, LED light of this Energizer. And really, in my opinion, it illuminates the room just as well. But let's see how bright the meter says it is. 15. That claims that it is 15. So I have all of my test data out. Let's now move on to the second part of this test.